Aloha class, I wanted to do a video on exercise 10-19 from the textbook. And this is about a non-monetary exchange. And if you can remember our rules about commercial substance, if the exchange has commercial substance, we're gonna recognize the gains immediately and the losses immediately. Um, if it lacks commercial substance, no cash is received. Defer gains, recognize losses immediately. Lacks commercial substance, cash is received. Partial, recognize partial gain, recognizes loss is, losses immediately. So we have these scenarios. Um, first, Carlos, we need to do the accounting for Carlos. Um, and it lacks commercial substance, then Tony. will see it from Tony's side, and that also lacks commercial substance. Carlos, and it has commercial substance. And Tony, and it has commercial sub substance. So let's just start off looking at the information. Um, they do this exchange, they're exchanging equipment, and so you have the cost and the accumulated depreciation. Whenever you have the cost and accumulated depreciation, you want to find the carrying amount. Um, so we can compare the carrying amount to the fair value to see if there's going to be a gain or a loss, um, and if we're going to recognize the gain, or if we're going to refer the gain, or only recognize partial gain. And with every circumstance over here, we've, as we've gone over, losses are always recognized right away. So carrying value over here. So I'm going to do the equipment minus the accumulation, accumulated depreciation. And so my carrying value, 9,000 versus a fair value of the equipment is 12,500. So automatically, I know this is going to be a gain since the fair value is greater than the carrying value. And so this is going to be a gain of 3,500. And let's look at Tony. And when you look at what's um, the fair value of the equipment for Carlos was 12,500, and the cash given up was 3,000. So the sum of those two was 15,500, and we're exchanging it for a fair value of equipment from Tony with the exact same fair value. So this makes a reasonable sense that they're exchanging or changing non monetary assets that have the same. Um, or have a, one has a fair value and one has a fair value plus cash to make it the same amount exchange there. So let's look at uh, Tony, what it's carrying at. And so they're carrying at 18,000, but if you went to the market and you sold it, you're only gonna get 15,500. So we're gonna recognize, or we're gonna have a loss there. And let's look at how we're going to account for this. And what's best for me in doing um, journal entries, especially with these, we have an equipment and the accumulated depreciation. Automatically, and let's start with Carlos, we can do, we're getting rid of this equipment, 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 and this is the old one. So we can credit that equipment right away. The equipment was 28,000 and the accumulated depreciation, we're going to debit out. We want to reverse out this de the accumulated depreciation. We're no longer having this asset. Accumulated depreciation is usually a credit, but now we're going to have it as a debit. So we're going to debit that 19,000. Accumulated depreciation, debit, 19,000. And then we will credit the value, and it was 28,000 of the equipment, the old equipment. And let's leave a little space between these two, 28,000. So when this, when Carlos lacks accounting, um, sorry, lacks commercial substance and no cash is received, Carlos is giving cash, but he's not receiving any cash. So lacks commercial substance. And so I'm going to defer any gains and recognize losses immediately. And so what's best for me is kind of to leave this new equipment, the new equipment as a, as a plug figure. You know, it's going to be a residual value. Whatever we end up with after we've reversed out this um, accumulated depreciation and gotten rid of this asset, um, we're just going to plug this value here. And we know that we did pay um, cash. Cash given up was this $3,000. So we're going to need to credit that cash. Cash, 3000 we can't recognize this gain. We know that we can't recognize this gain. We need to defer this gain. So no gain here. We're not lose. We're not going to recognize a loss. There's no loss to recognize, and so you have all your credits and you have all your well almost all your debits. And so if we were to look at the sum of this, sorry, you can't see the sum. It's thirty-one thousand. So thirty-one thousand 
credits minus my accumulated depreciation. Oh, 12,000 here. So we're kind of just plugging this new equipment number um, and looking at the book value, we can look at this book value um, 9,000, which is what he would probably keep it at. But since he, he paid, paid an additional cash, we have to take that into account as well. And that's how we're gonna value um, this asset to defer the gain. And the gain was that 3,500 3, gain. So yes, you are getting equipment that is worth 15,500, but we have to defer the gain and we're gonna value it at 12,000 here. So these are our entries for Carlos's accounting, which lacks commercial substance, our debits and our credits. So this is Carlos Black. Um, and then Tony accounting lacks commercial substance. Tony on this side, we we real we know that he had a loss of two thousand five hundred. This is he is receiving cash. Tony is receiving cash. Carlos is giving it up. I'm accounting for Tony. He's he is receiving cash. This does lack commercial substance, but he's not in a gain situation, so we don't need to recognize a partial gain here. But we're going to need to recognize losses immediately. Same with all the other. Um, instances here, but he has a loss, so we need to recognize that loss. Losses are a debit balance. Um, usually a loss is a debit balance, so let's do, this is Tony, um, and we had the loss here. We can already put that down, loss of 2,500. Loss on equipment disposal, you could say equipment disposal, that would be fine. Um, some sort of loss to realize that we have this loss, and it was 2,500. Again, we're going to credit our accumulated or debit our accumulated depreciation and credit our old equipment. And so the old equipment was 28,000 debit, 10,000 accumulated depreciation. So we can do accumulated depreciation here, 10,000, credit our old equipment, 28,000. So he does receive this cash though, so that would be a debit, cash debit of 3,000. And he is getting a new asset, a new equipment, equipment that is new. And so we could also plug this number if we really wanted to, um, just to make sure that we balance out. If I were to do 29,000 minus the 3,000, minus the 2,500, minus the accumulated depreciation, 13,500. And so, um, oh, did I get a number wrong? Cash, loss, accumulated depreciation. Oh, I sorry, it's 28,000. Sorry, typo error, 28,000, not 29,000. Um, over here, the equipment was 28,000. Sorry about that typo. Um, so the equipment is 12500 right? Because he's getting this fair value of equipment, he's getting the cash, but it's not worth the same amount that it, that it was carrying, amount, carrying at. So the loss on the equipment disposal, 2500 new equipment, 12500